delighted to be joined by Ambassador Lozada. He is the EU's special representative to the Sahel region and a former Spanish ambassador. You're very welcome, Ambassador. Thank you. I might start by asking you what steps you think the EU needs to take to become a more effective global actor. Is it a case of having more effective institutions or better political leadership? I think that uh, the EU is already a global actor. Uh, the thing is that now we are facing a complicated situation in the world uh, in which, of course, we must adapt our institutions, we must adapt our, our leadership, must also adapt to this new situation that, that we have in, fr in front of us. But the EU uh, is opening de delegations all over the world. Uh, we have the EAS, which is the external action uh, um, like the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the, uh, of the EU. We have now a new, uh, we're going to have soon a new high representative, a new high representative and uh, we are very clear which are also the ideas uh, and what, how, we have to, how we must promote uh, the EU as a global actor in the, in, in the world. And I think with this process, uh, I think that really the EU is committed now all around the world is committed with the principles, our principles of democracy, our principles of freedom, of course, and our principle also of helping and contribute to the development of the poor countries, of the poorest countries in the, in the, in the world. The EU is the main donor, practically, for instance, in Africa. Uh, of course, sometimes some may say that there is a lack of visibility of the EU. Uh, because maybe we don't blow too much our own trumpet, maybe, maybe that's the reason, but on the other hand, I think that now with these uh, new leadership, which has started also with, uh, with Federica Mogherini, Federica Mogherini gave a big impulse, for instance, uh, to, uh, to Africa, and it's going to be the same with, uh, with, uh, with the High Representative uh, Minister Borrell. Uh, the, the EU has become and is still, I think, and will be a stronger uh, actor, in, actor in the world. That's for, with no doubt for that. Thank you. And turning then to EU-Africa relations, which is obviously your area of expertise. Uh, these have received a particular focus in the EU's new strategic agenda? Of course. Uh, the EU, as you know, established for specifically for the Sahel, which uh, is an area of instability, an important area of instability. And I will say this sentence, uh, that the security in the Sahel is closely linked to the security in Europe. This is fundamental to understand. Uh, this is made also by the demographic growth that there is and by instant security. But the EU was the first to establish a strategy for the Sahel in 2011, before even the, the events in Mali. And uh, this, uh, this strategy, uh, which has been developed into an action plan, uh, which is now under development, an action plan. This strategy uh, was, in a way, almost revolutionary, and it was based on two principles, security and development. You cannot have security without development, not development without, 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 security, without security. And on top of that, the EU was also what we call the global approach. I mean, you must, any, any, any events in the world must be under this global approach, not only security, not only development, but also political question, humanitarian question, all the different steps in all the different parts of a conflict. And with this uh, the political approach of the EU, I think we are able to face the big problems that now are facing, uh, are, are, are living, uh, are taking place in, uh, in, uh, in Africa. But uh, mustn't forget this strategic approach. Today there are, I think, in the world more than 17 strategies, but the EU was the first one to establish one in this, in this context. And turning a little bit to the challenges you mentioned facing the region, are there any particular challenges you'd like to highlight in terms of stability yes, development? Of course, uh, and uh, with the idea of this global approach that I say, we have, uh, unfortunately in the region, uh, I say, always say that there is, it's a polygon of crisis. You find in the region all the crises you can imagine. There's a first governor, crisis of governance, uh, corruption, of course, uh, that, that, that is a problem. The second one is security, and that's where uh, today uh, we are seeing, unfortunately, a situation which is deteriorating very quickly in the Sahel, probably, but with a propension to go uh, far from the 
beyond the Sahel to the southern part of, uh, of Africa, to the Gulf of Guinea, in which countries stabilize the whole, the, the whole region. And this uh, insecu insecurity is, uh, is new because it's not only a security based on a jihadist uh, attack which has taken place, for instance, in Mali. It's also uh, now taking advantage of all confrontation, traditional confrontations between and clashes which were ancestral between for instance herders and agricultures and, uh, and farmers, taking advantage of that to create chaos and to create a situation of instability. And that's one of the main objects. But there are many other, uh, many other problems that, that we find. Problem of demography, as I said. Countries like Niger, for instance, duplicate, can duplicate their population in 18 years, uh, more or less. There's a problem of poverty. Uh, the, the income per person in a country like, uh, like Niger is $400 per person, where I heard that in, in, in Ireland is around more than 70,000. You see the difference, which is absolutely enormous. Then there is an, um, there is an imbalance, and we can go to another one, which I think is very important, that if you combine it with the, um, with the problem of uh, with the demographic uh, progression is the one on climate change. Climate change has also an impact, a very, a very strong impact. Why? Climate change makes less uh, land to be tilled, uh, with more demography, then more confrontation between all the different uh, between all the different groups. And the EU, in its strategy, in its actions, take one by one all these problems. And there is one also I think that you interested in as migration, which is a consequence of all, of, all, of all these problems. Then seeing that as a context, yes, it's a, it's a place where the EU has really a special, uh, a special role to play because our strategy, our way of thinking, the means that we have, and when I say the EU is not only the EU, it's the EU and its member states. And for instance, Ireland, I know, is now taking really in good consideration uh, Africa and the Sahel, and I'm really congratulate them for what they're doing and their analysis of the situation, which is very ac accurate. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador, for joining us today. It was a pleasure to hear your good. ideas on the future of Europe, and we look forward to welcoming, welcoming you back. Thank you. It's a real pleasure to be with you. Yeah.